my boys on food mm -hmm. in fast food. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to welcome you to our Wednesday night prayer meeting. Um, hope everyone is doing well. At this time, I'm going to open up with prayer and then we'll turn it over to our uh, co-host, Jenny. Let's bow our heads. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for coming together this tonight for this opportunity to listen to a word from um, Jenny Jones. We thank you, Father, for blessing us. We thank you for allowing us to um, just be a part of this service tonight. We pray for our family, our friends. We pay, pray for everyone that's listening tonight. Um, for those that are in their homes that are not feeling well, I ask that you would touch their bodies and that you will bring healing. Um, we pray for the service tonight, oh God, that you would um, be in the midst of it all. For this is our prayer in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, Jenny, I will turn it over to you. All right, thank you so much. I appreciate that. I've already heard from the pastor. He told me you may be out or you may be a little bit late. So I wasn't surprised. I would have been surprised if I wouldn't have gotten that message. I would have been like, oh, pastor, your voice changed. <laughs> so, so anyway, um, Thank you all. We are here now at week six, which uh, it's surprising. I remember when the pastor and I got together several weeks ago and he says, hey, I want you to do a, a six week long. And I was like, six weeks. I said, that's a lot of time, pastor. So here we are the end of six, the six week and time flew by. So um, I want to go ahead and get started tonight. I'm telling you, if I will give you about two minutes to go find something to write with. If you haven't, uh, been writing notes tonight is going to be an action-packed uh, night it's going to be very full of a lot of information uh, as you can see outside it is snowing uh, no it's not snowing that's just my uh, background I'm trying to be funny while y'all go and get something to write with because it's cold enough to snow oh, no, it, oh. Not, that cold. <laughs> <laughs> not in it's California cold we ain't here yet we're not there yet uh, you're right um, I'm up there near Tahoe, but uh, no, nah, it ain't that serious yet. Not where I'm at. Um, oh, you're in Tahoe, so it's yeah. no, no, I'm not. I'm in no, I'm in, I'm in, uh, I'm in uh, Elk Grove. Oh. Yeah, I'm not. Oh, okay, in, I mean, nah. I figured that was your virtual background. But still, <laughs> if you were in Tahoe, that might be that way. <laughs> That's my virtual background. No, okay. I'm. Uh, I was. Uh, I just had that on. I I forgot that I had that one on. I have a couple of them. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and share my um, screen here. And I always kind of just want to make sure that people have an opportunity to get in because tonight is going, I'm telling you guys, tonight is going to be super, super packed. All right. So, all right, let's go ahead and get started. Week six. Every, can everybody see my slides? Yes, no. Can everybody see the slide? Yes. It says yes. week six. Okay, all right. All right, so all right. So this is our sixth and final week here. I want to go ahead and do a recap and kind of bring you to where we are. Uh, week one, of course, we have the biblical foundations, and then we move to foundations of money and it introduced you guys to some financial instruments, right? Um, then we went into investment 
fundamentals. We talked about stocks, bonds, mutual funds, right? Then we did retirement. We talked about growth and income funds and mutual funds and the suitcases. Then we went into debt management, right? We talked about credit cards, we're paying those and, and those, those debts, uh, running a zero-based budget, trying to make sure all dollars are allocated. Uh, but tonight is going to be insurance fundamentals. Um, this is always, I always have the most questions from this particular um, class. This is the last class. I will um, hang out for questions, right? But I'm going to go through it and it's going to, it's going to probably be at a 40,000 foot view. And I am going to drill into a couple of the things, but insurance is this big, right? It's, but I'm going to give you the fundamentals that if you get the fundamentals, you'll understand the rest of it. Or when you see it, you'll be able to identify it. All right. All right. So let's go ahead and get started here. Um, Proverbs 13 and 22, a good person leaves an inheritance for their children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. Right. And so, you know, it's a lot in that pro and it's a lot in, in that actual Proverbs. And I think just reading that book of Proverbs, there's always things you glean from it. And this is one of those, those, um, those passages that say, you know, try to position yourself to leave an inheritance, right? Don't, we're not going to be leaving a whole bunch of debt and, and the GoFundMe and all that other stuff. And that's why insurance always plays a part. And the strange thing about insurance is when I worked in insurance, I always found a lot of my clients would, the, the, as soon as they got into a crisis, the first thing that it would cancel is insurance. And it, it it, it, because all this expense, we don't need it right now. Well, you're going to see here as we, as we, as I kind of explain some things to you, you're going to find out that um, you can cancel a lot of things, but insurance is one of those things you shouldn't cancel. So I'm going to challenge Ms. Richardson to remind me if I don't cover it in a slide, I thought I may have put it in here, but remind me why that is the last thing you should, you should cancel. And you're going to probably find out later okay, why, but the, <laughs> but there is a specific reason and I, I may get to it. And when I do get to it, I'll let you know. And so, um, but I want to kind of hold off as the room kind of fills up and stuff like that. I want to make sure that, that I don't miss anybody with this one statement. It's very important. And there's a story with it as well. So um, I told you, I would talk to you in the 30,000 foot view, right? So if you understand, I'm going to give you these three basics. If I give you these three basics, all the rest of it, you should be able to put the pieces of the puzzle together for yourself, or when you see it, you'll be able to identify it. Um, so I have a, a, a blue line that separates term, and then there's permanent, universal, and then there's perm, whole life, right? And so when you look at this particular slide, basically what's happening is you got term is off to itself doing its own self thing, but then on the other side, you have permanent universal and permanent whole, right? And I'm going to break down all, um, all three. But if you understand each one and their component, you'll know whatever it is that somebody puts in front of you, you'll be able to identify it. Ah, I know exactly what that is, right? Because half the time people selling you stuff, they don't really know, right? They're just like, oh, well, my company told me to sell you this. Like, yeah, but does that work for me, right? And then they're... And they're, they're so new because it's hard to find insurance agents, right? Because they don't pay that well. It's a, it's, a, it's a long game in insurance and it doesn't pay that much initially. A lot of people don't stay in insurance for that long, right? Um, I used to sell insurance, by the way, and that's where I started. And um, it's hard to feed my family because a lot of people didn't believe and think that they needed insurance, right? And I was like, of course you need insurance, right? It's a transfer of risk. Um, Okay, so what I want to do is I want to start with a hundred thousand dollar face value, and I gave you at the bottom. I gave you samples of what it is that you would probably be buying, and uh, I gave you a hundred thousand face value because I'm going to break down the I'm going to break down the actual cost of a hundred thousand for each one of these. Now, so when you look at the term insurance, you look at a a vehicle that can get you to where you're trying to get to, right? So, um, you know, my my wife and I and another couple, we're talking about, hey, let's just drive to Vegas. You know, my parents are there. They say, hey, let's go there. Let's take a, you know, a couple of days to just hang out there, right? So we can go in a little smart car, right? All four of us, we can all go in a smart car. You guys see that down there in the blue smart car right there. 
uh, we can get there. Will we be comfortable? Right. We're going to be cramped. Right. Probably all four of us. Uh, I think only maybe two of us are fit and the other people have to sit on the laps. We don't have anywhere to take our luggage, but can we get there? Can we get to Las Vegas? Yes, we can still get there, right? So then the universal life is, hey, it's a Honda Accord, right? We can add power seats, power windows. We, in some of them, we can even have a little heated seats, right? Can we get there? Yeah, we can get there, right? Will all four of us fit? Yeah, we have at least room for maybe two or three sets of luggage, right? Um, but we can get there, right? It's a Honda Accord. But permanent insurance, we can ride in style. We can ride in elegance. We can ride in luxury. We won't feel the road. We'll glide, right? Up and down, right? The suspension to catch us. We can get there and we'd be like, man, we're here already, right? That's permanent. So let's go back through it. Term, it can get us there, right? It's going to be very inexpensive very inexpensive, right? Universal, it'll get us there. We got some flexibility, right? We we get there, you know, we may need AC, we may not need AC, but we can have it, right? Um, we may get roll down windows, right? We may get power windows, right? Depends on what we, what we want to put on the universal, right? But permanent, you know what you're getting when you're rolling in an S class. You know what you're getting. If you've never rolled an S class, go test drive one because it is a different ride, right? And that's permanent insurance. So both of them are permanent. Universal is permanent uh, and um, and whole life is permanent, right? But when people talk about permanent insurance, they talk really about whole life. When actuality, right? Universal is just as good, right? Um, but I think in the insurance industry, people are taught to sell term insurance or whole life insurance, right? The, those are the two extremes. You guys know I like the middle based off of what we talked about last week when we talked about having the growth and income sitting in the middle, getting the best of both worlds. I promise you, if you're gonna roll with insurance, you really wanna sit in the middle with the universal life, right? So I don't know what's gonna fit your particular situation, but what I found with most clients that I've met with, they're like, listen, I don't wanna pay a whole lot for insurance. I don't need it for investments and you can borrow against it and get all creative and all that other stuff. So I don't really need whole life, right? I'm gonna tell you when there's a good opportunity for you to do whole life, but universal is that policy that um, you never really cancel because universal does some things for you. Right. And I'm going to, I'm going to move, as I move forward, I'm going to break down what it does for you. So let me make, let me make this disclaimer. I don't know exactly what you need. I know what works for best for a lot of people because it gives universal is the most flexible policy that you can buy term as it it's term, it's term insurance. It only lasts for a term. That's it. As long as it's winter outside, it only lasts for a term. It only lasts for winter. It only lasts for summer, right? And I'll, I'll break that down a little bit more, right? All right, so let's talk about what a $100,000 policy will cost, right? For a, a uh, uh, $25 a male non-smoker, all of these are non-smokers, right? Uh, we're looking at a 10-year term policy, right? It's gonna last for 10 years. That's all it's gonna last for, 10 years. It's not gonna last for 11, not gonna last for 12. Can you have it for 11 and 12? Yeah, but is it designed for you to have 11 and 12? No, it's only designed the way the mortality table is built in and the way they're gonna charge you. It's really gonna last $25, $25. What happens in the 11th year? Well, $25 becomes $45, right? What happens in the 12th year and you still have it? Well, $45 becomes $140. Right. And it's like, well, why is it going up? Because we're really only contracted to have it for 10 years. Uh, uh, but if you still have the policy, you haven't canceled it and you're still going to pay it. Now you have to actually start paying the actual real true cost of insurance because you did not expire or you did not. Um, uh, that person, whoever was underneath that um, is still living. So no payout was made. And so you basically beat the odds. And so insurance are put together based on a mortality table of life expectancy. 
And what that basically means is if you've lasted this long, if you beat the 10 year window, then now there may be a chance we actually may have to pay out $100,000. Does that make sense? Did anybody get that? I kind of I kind of told you, in a, I always put it in a riddle a little bit, but for the insurance company, they're saying, ah, you're still living. You still have this term policy. Uh, there must be something wrong with you. So now, because there may be a chance, we actually may have to pay out this 100000 And so since there is a chance, we want to start getting a lot more of the cost built into it just in case. But when we sold you the 10-year policy, we knew at your age, we knew that you'd have a good chance of beating the mortality table and you'd be around for longer than 10 years. We bet against that. That's why we only charge you $25 because we knew the chance of us paying that out would be slim to none. Does that make sense? Did anybody get that? Got it. Okay. I just, I want to make sure, right? Because I'm going to do a lot of checks on this, right? I'm going to be checking. I'm going to do a thumbs up. If I do a thumbs up, be like, yep, got it. If anybody say, ah, oh, nah, hold up, break that down another way, then I want to make sure that, that I get it, right? So that's the term policy, right? Now, universal life, it's not $25. Same 100000 is going to cost you $75 a month. Now, why is that? Because universal policy, it's flexible. It's universal. I can bend it forward. I can bend it backwards, right? Meaning that if I had a policy for $75 a month and I got caught in one of the economic cycles, because those happen, right? We talked about that last month, last week, every five to seven years, or maybe a layoff or something like that. If I've had the policy for a good two, three years, three, four years, I may have a little bit of cash value in it that would actually, I, I call and say, hey, you know what? I don't want to cancel my policy. I want to use the cash value that's building up in it. And I want that to pay for the cost of insurance on this policy. And they'll say, okay, well, you have enough to carry you for 12 months, right? They'll, they're supposed to tell you. It says, you got enough cash value in there to make the payments to your policy for 12 months or at least six months to get back on your feet. Depends on how long you have the policy initially, right? And I don't want to get too technical. I just want to be able to explain to you how much flexibility you have with a, with a universal life policy. And it's a permanent policy, meaning that it will last you your entire life. A term just lasts for a term, a window. A permanent policy is supposed to last you at least until your mortality, you know, 85, 95 years old. Um, it's a little bit more, right? It's a little bit more insurance. Now, what happens if you needed to forego and couldn't make payments for six months to a year, when you do start going back to pay, make payments, you may have to pay a little bit more than the 75 you were initially paying. And that's kind of to catch your policy up and make it perform the way it's supposed to be performing. This is some good stuff. Are you guys getting this? No? Yes? Yep, yep, yep. Okay, so what happens is it doesn't go away. The, the policy doesn't go away as long as you continue to pay on it. A term policy is once you miss a payment, they say, listen, we're going to give you a grace. We give you maybe a 30-day grace. We give you the next month. You don't make that payment, it's it. It's a wrap. Everything you've paid, everything you've done, it's done. We're done. We don't. We're done. Our contract is up because you didn't fulfill your end of the bargain. You're like, man, I've had you guys for five years. They're like, so what? You didn't, you didn't make your premium payment. Their premium payment is part of the contract. You didn't make it. We gave you a 30-day grace. We sent you notice after notice and you still didn't make the payment. We're done here. So you've paid five years into the policy for nothing because you did, nobody expired or, or the cash value was no one ever cashed out on that policy. And so you've made payments for 10 years. I mean, five years, seven years, eight years, nobody ever cashed out on it. That's what happens with the term policy. You don't make the payment. They give you, some give you a 10 year, some give you a 30 day grace. And if you don't make the pay, you're done. Permanent policies work different, right? Permanent policies. So when you look on the other side of here, you got term over here, universal and the whole life are different. They're permanent policies, meaning that they're going to build some type of cash value on the back end that's going to give you an opportunity to be able to make payments on um, to fulfill the, the, the policy within itself. Right. And now, um, and so they don't really just cancel, right? If you had it in the first year, it's probably a good chance, the likelihood that you may be able to get maybe another 30 days out of, so maybe you'd have a 60 day grace. I'm just using 
uh, hypothetical numbers because you may have put in enough cash value to be able to buy you an additional 30 days. But term policy, there is no cash value. It is what it is, right? That's why it's only $25. So you pay $75 there, a little bit more. Now, uh, a permanent policy for the whole life is going to be $150 a month. Right. So you went from twenty five dollars, which is a term to one hundred and fifty dollars a month. Right. It's one hundred fifty dollars every single month, every single month. It's kind of like a universal a little bit, but it has so many more bells and whistles. Right. Um, it builds true cash value on the back end. There is a guaranteed rate that it builds in. Right. It builds in. I don't know. The last time I checked, it was about three percent. Minimum, but it builds in the 3%, right? And it becomes an asset, right? A whole life policy, a permanent policy is an actual asset, right? So you could, you could, there's much more flexibility. You can borrow against it and do all those other creative things. People say, hey, do you have any assets? And listen, all I have is a whole life policy and it has X amount of dollars in it or whatever. So it is treated like a true asset, right? And um, I'm going to show you on the, on the back end some of the flexibility that you have with a, whole life policy. Um, I'll show you that a little bit later. So you guys see the, the, the difference in, in the various degrees of what you're, you'd be owning here if you had insurance. Does that make sense? Everybody's good? Come on, Miss Richards, you got to work with yep, me now. Yep, yep. <laughs> okay. <laughs> work, work, work with me now. now. I know you probably have your son's probably watching another game. Hopefully he's he paying is, attention. He is, but he's trying to listen to the He game need to be paying attention. This is some good stuff right here. Because I'm gonna have something that's I'm gonna have I'm gonna have something that's gonna that's gonna really make his ears perk up. Okay. And some things that I did uh, with my boys and stuff like that. So um so it is a difference, right? It's the it's the um the $25, $75, $150, right? Um, and this is $100,000 we're talking about. And when I say $100,000, that's the face value. That means whoever the beneficiary is, and they have to have an insurable interest, right? I have an insurable interest on my wife, right? She has an insurable interest on me, right? I can't go to my neighbor and say, hey, I want to put insurance on him. I don't have an insurable interest. That's illegal, right? And so if you have an insurance insurable interest, then there needs to be a beneficiary, I'm the beneficiary of my wife, she's the beneficiary of me, or it's our trust or something like that. So um, the face value is what pays out if something were to happen to that person on their life. That's why it's called the face value. So the face value that I explained to you was $100,000, right? And so that is, these are the basic features of an actual contract. Um, and it's based off, and this is what I was telling you, and, and thank you for not reminding me, Ms. Richardson, I'm messing with you, but I, now this is my point. Uh, my point is the reason why you never cancel an insurance policy is because it's based on age and it's based on health. Let me repeat that. Repeat the por favor. Yes, I'm repeating it again. It's based off age and health. And it's always counted almost six months in advance, right? It's counted your next birthday. So I'm 52 now. I think I'm 52. Okay. I'm 52 now, but it starts to count against my, uh, it starts to count me at a higher cost when I become 52 and a half. So this is, oh, you're 52 and a half. We're going to quote you for 53, right? And they always, they always quote you six months into your next birthday is when you get quoted. Right. She says, hey, well, I see here you have my quote. It's 53. He says, yeah, I have to quote you 53 because by the time they do all the under, by the time they do all the underwriting, all those other things, you may be close to that age. So we're going to go ahead and build in our risk already. Does that make sense? So, so it's based off age and it's based off health, right? That's the reason why you never, ever, ever, never cancel insurance policy. Never. Right. And um, people say, oh, we'll just cancel, we'll just get one next year. Well, it's going to cost more. And then you have to still get underwritten again. Right. They have to go, you have to do a physical or they have to take blood and then all those other things. Right. And that's one of the things when you buy insurance, insurance is one of those things that when you're young, you try to buy as much of it as you can because you're not, as you get older, you don't get healthier. You just don't. Right you get start, stuff starts breaking down, right? Stuff's now you need a new hip, right? Now you need a new 
you know, knee, right? You know, those types of things are happening. That starts to affect the cost of your insurance because what that is telling the insurance company or MIB, which they're called the Medical Information Bureau, I'm not going to tell them that I had to replace hip. Doesn't matter. The Medical Information Bureau, who is the keeper of all medical history, will actually disclose that to the insurance company and say, you know, you know, they just had, you know, double bypass, right? And you're sitting there on your application, you're like, oh, I'm perfectly healthy. Look at me. I can walk around, do whatever. The Medical Information Bureau will has all your information. They'll come back and say, yeah, they had a triple bypass. And it's like, dude, why you didn't tell me you had triple bypass? That's going to triple your cost of insurance. It's like, well, how did you find out? I didn't give you none of my Kaiser number or my Sutter, Sutter number. I said, the insurance company knows all, right? And it's also based off your line of work as well. That's a factor in there as well, right? So if you climb poles for pg e all day long and stuff like that, it's going to be a little bit of risk associated with that. Why is there a little bit of risk associated with that? Why would we have to charge a little bit more for the risk associated with that? Because we may have to pay out sooner than what we thought. Because when you're paying your premiums, you're paying into the cost of insurance and insurance is based on numbers or the law, or the law of large numbers, right? If, if enough people pay into the insurance, it's a transfer of risk. If we've done our calculations right, then we may not have to pay out on this policy. We may not have to pay out on this policy um, before we're supposed to. Right. And so that's the reason why. All right. So um, are we good on that? And the proceeds are tax free. And so I think that's my next slide. Yes. So this is from the IRS uh, website. It says generally life insurance proceeds you receive as a beneficiary due to the death of the insured person aren't includable in gross income and you don't have to report them. Right. And so what they say is, however, any interest you receive is taxable and you should report it is interest received. And that's when you start looking at the cash value and things of that nature of the policy. Right. Um, and um, so I just wanted to give you that. So if they tell you it's a hundred thousand dollar policy, it's a hundred thousand dollar policy. You don't have to pay taxes on it. Um, so I just wanted to give you that. So it's not taxable. Now. Let's talk about, let's break the term down a little bit more. So we're we doing here on time. All right, we're doing very good here on time. All right, so for term insurance, you can get a high face value, right? It's pennies on the dollar, right? Um, I can get a half a million dollar policy and pay 40 bucks a month. I'm just giving you roundabout numbers, right? I'm not giving you hard and fast numbers. I'm just giving you roundabout numbers of what it would cost. I can get a half, I can insure myself for a half a million dollars for 40, 50 bucks or something like that, right? I'm just giving you an example of what a term policy can get you, right? It comes in a couple of different flavors. It comes in a five-year term. It comes in a 10-year term. Um, it comes in a 20-year term. And very rarely do you find a 30-year terms. And what I think has happened is they're selling more 30 years now than they used to sell more 20 years because they used to just sell a lot of 20 years and not a lot of 30 years. But people are starting to live a lot longer, so they're selling a lot more 30 years uh, term policies. And again, it lasts for that term. It lasts for a 10-year term, five-year term, 20-year term, 30-year term. Now, your question is, because I already see Sister Richardson, she doesn't know that I can see her, but I can see her thinking, why would I buy term? You're supposed to ask a question, Sister Richardson. Why would I buy term? Exactly. Why would I do that? <laughs> That's a great question. You ask good questions. The reason why you would do that is because your son, who's young, right? He's, he's, yeah. you know, he, you would buy it to cover a particular period of time or chapter in your life where you need a lot of insurance. How does that sound? Is that a good answer? Not good enough. No. You, you're supposed to say, yeah, that sounds good to me, right? No, no. So what I'm basically saying is, let's say you have a high mortgage, right? Let's say you have, I don't know, 300,000, 400,000 on your mortgage in your working years, right? And you have babies, right? You have kids, right? You say, listen, I need a million dollar policy. If something happened to me, I don't come home tomorrow. I want the house to be paid off. I want the kids to be able to go to college. There's things you're going to want to have happen. You can get a million dollar policy for less than uh, $200 a month. 
Does that make sense? So it covers you during your working years, your period where you're, 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 you're back and forth to work, you're commuting, you're on a highway, and you guys are down in, in uh, uh, Southern Cal. So everybody's always on the freeways. Everybody's driving crazy, right? They drive crazy up here. They just, it's a different crazy. So you might, you're commuting a lot. So you might need a lot of insurance just in case something happens. So will it cover you during your period of time? Yes, I got a 20 year policy. Now my son is 22, right? And if something happens, he's kind of working. He has his group insurance at work. He's good to go. He can take care of himself. Um, you know, he's out doing his own thing or working or whatever. See how you needed it for that window of time to replace the money uh, if, you, if something would have happened. Does that make sense? So you, you essentially transfer the risk during that period of time. Does that make sense? It's, it still doesn't for term. Oh, that's because I explained it to you. Now it doesn't make sense. But when people were selling it and everybody was buying it because it was cheap, they didn't understand that, hey, this is only for a period of time. What they failed to realize was now I'm 20 years older, right? I got it at 30, right? Now I'm 50 and I try to go get it at 50. It's going to cost three times as much as what it would have cost when I was, when I was 20 or when I was 30. And so those are the things that if you don't know, you don't even, you're not even thinking about now, right? I'm looking back. I was looking at some photos, right? I'm like, man, that was 10 years ago. That was five years ago. Time is going by. You're getting older. And if you'd have been covered in that period of time, so there's no cash value, no die, no pay, right? The reason why I have 90% there is because 90% of the time they don't pay out. Term policies, 90% of term policies do not pay out. Only 10% of term policies pay out. So you say, well, why would I buy that? You say, well, listen, I'd rather have it if I needed it. If I didn't need it, God be the glory, right? And you cannot miss a payment, right? You cannot miss a payment. A permanent policy you keep for your whole life, your permanent life. So it's different, right? And so you would get the insurance. You would get it. You just bought a new house and all that. You're the sole breadwinner or you get you insure the sole breadwinner if you're a homemaker excuse me, if you're a homemaker, you would do that. But I'm going to show you later where it makes sense. So I, know, I, I like I like where you're headed. So we'll go, we'll pick that back up. All right, so. Wait, wait, term, wait. So you, you're saying you're going to show us where term actually makes sense? Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that's, uh, come on now, don't, you can't be the, the you can't be 100% contrarian. You got to work with me here, right? <laughs> I, I am going to show you and either you're going to agree or you're going to be like, I don't know, I still disagree. And I'm going to say, okay, go and get a quote for a permanent policy and see how much you really will say, ah, but we'll see where it makes sense. So okay. I, I, I appreciate that though. I, I appreciate that. Um, and I will show you, right? Um so a permanent policy, a universal, it's flexible. I already told you, you can bend it forwards, you can bend it backwards, right? I got caught in a bind, I got laid off at work, but I do not want to cancel my insurance. That's the last thing I want to do, right? You call them and they says, hey, listen, you got enough cash value. You don't have the $75 a month. And they may say, listen, I got unemployment, so I can't pay 75, but I can pay 25. They'll be like, all right, you can pay 25. We'll pull $50 out of your cash value and we'll cover the cost of it like that too. Or I can't make any payments. All right. Well, you have enough cash value to carry you for at least six months. You'd be like, great. And so you can do that. So you can add more to the payments to create a reserve, right? So at $75, you'd be like, you know what? Now it's good times. I got a raise at work. Uh, we got a little extra money. I'm going to put in 125. I'm not going to just put in 75. I'm going to put in 125. That's what I love about the universal because it's so flexible. You can bend it forwards, you can bend it backwards. Oh, I got caught in a bind. I don't have enough, but I want to pay up my reserves now. So I want to pay a little bit more on the top of it. I want to put a little bit more in the uh, actual retirement. I mean, not to retire. I want to put a little bit more into the insurance policy. You can actually do that with a universal life. Love that. I love that policy, right? And uh, I'm just letting you know because it acts like a term. And it acts like a perm. Again, that's that growth and income. It gives me kind of the best of both worlds, right? That's what it does. Um, when you're paying on a permanent policy, when you're paying on a whole life, I'll come back to that. So what, what's happening is 
the longer you have the policy, let me just kind of explain it to you this way. The longer you have a policy, the cost of insurance goes up, right? And so every year the cost of insurance goes up. That's why when your term policy is done, when you're done with your term policy, and you only had it for that term, that's why it continues to go up because the actual cost of insurance continues to go up. The reason why the cost of insurance continues to go up is because there may be a chance we may have to pay out. That's what the insurance company is saying. So we want you to carry that cost with us, right? And so what happens is th the more you put in, the more you can keep that cushion um, for yourself. This is a little complicated slide. I'm normally in a classroom setting and I can explain it better when I draw on the screen, but I can't. And I, what I'm basically saying is you can put more money into the top of a policy, of a, a, a permanent, uh, permanent policy. And, uh, but what I wanted to illustrate was the cost, see this is 2010, this is 2020, it's 2030, the cost of insurance still continues to go up, okay? And the way they build in your universal life is they already build it in with your, with your cost that you're paying now to supplement the cost later and or cover the cost of the entire policy over the period of time. That's why you go from 25 to 75. Because you have 50, you're paying and you're already paying into the to the back end of the policy. Did that make sense? Got it. Okay. Either I'm a good instructor or you just say, hey, can you get along with this? <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, I don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Uh, so a permanent policy can get a high face value. It's considered an asset, right? This is the whole life. Paid up policy can be sold in exchange for payout, right? And so people can buy your people, a paid up policy, that's a paid up whole life policy. People can, ex, ex, can exchange that out. You, you ever heard of the, the J, J. E. Wentworth? I want my money and I want it now or something like that, right? You can actually sell your policy. Let's say they come to you and say, hey, you have a terminal illness. And they says, hey, listen, look at your medical records. Listen, you only have six months to live. You can actually start taking money out of that policy or somebody can buy that policy from you because it's an actual asset. You have a lot more flexibilities. You have a lot more bells and whistles, right? Um, it can actually make its own payments. You could get to a point where that policy, once it breaks even, and what they'll call in the insurance world, once it pops, meaning it's, it's broke even, you no longer have to make another payment to the policy ever again in your life. Those are the flexibilities. There's a lot of things you could do with a permanent policy. That's why they're so expensive, right? Uh, you cannot miss a payment initially, right? Um, you can't miss a payment probably for the first 10 years of the policy, maybe the first seven to 10 years of the policy, right? Um, it is not as flexible as a universal life. So it's a little bit longer into the policy. We say, hey, you know what? I ran on tough times. Let me pull, let me make the payments inside of there, make those payments for me, right? And it's a little, it's, it's a, the window's a lot longer for it to start paying for itself. But once it does pay for itself, it pays for itself the entire time that you have it. So I'm gonna show you uh, where that would make sense as well. So I'm gonna show you where the perm makes sense. I'm gonna show you where, uh, I'm gonna show you where the whole life makes sense. And I'm going to show you where the term makes sense. I already basically explained to you where the universal life makes sense, right? Um, and this just is another illustration. It is like the uh, term policy. There's a cash value in it, right? The cost of insurance still continues to go up. But once it gets to a point where it can kind of break even and pay for itself, then you can actually borrow cash against it. Uh, and that's tax-free. You can make a tax-free withdrawal out of it, right? And so you can do that as well. And so those, it's still, you still have the cost of insurance, no matter what policy you have, the cost of insurance is going to always go up. But when you have it inside a permanent policy, it lives inside of a container that you've put additional monies in to cover those costs. A term policy, there is no additional monies. It is what it is. At the end of this term, that's it, we're done, right? Okay, so how are we doing on time here? All right, so we got about 20 minutes left. Right. So this is where this is where I explained to Mrs. Richardson why 
or how she can do that, right? So <laughs> you can have combinations, right? A lot of people say, oh, I can't have a kind. You can mix and match. I can have all three. I know the, for a fact that I need a uh, million dollars worth of insurance, right? So I can go and say, hey, let me get 600,000 worth of term, term insurance. Let me get, you know, another, you know, 400,000 of, you know, what I got my numbers mixed up. So I got six of the term and then I get three of the universal and then I get a hundred thousand of the, of the whole life. I can have all three and I would have a million dollars worth of insurance, right? So if something happened to me, a million dollars of insurance would be paid out in three different checks, but I still have a million dollars. I'm, I'm aiming for that number, right? And so where you may say, Ms. Richards, well, do I really need a term? Yeah, the term is going to carry you in when you're the most risk and when you will be needed and counted upon the most, right? So in your working years, when you are the sole producer of income in your house and you have minors or children in the house, um, you need as much insurance as you can. And that's really to replace the income, right? Because if you are, if your child is 10 and they need to take care of them at least another eight years, multiply that by how many, how much you make a year, right? If something were to happen to you, then that's maybe the face value you need. I'm no longer here, but if somebody takes care of him or if you're a single parent or if you're, you have another spouse, you have to be able to cover that cost. So a lot of people say, well, my wife's a homemaker or my husband's a homemaker. They still need insurance too, because there's a cost associated with being a homemaker, right? Because if you're a homemaker, um, it costs to run the home, right? If you're picking up the kids from daycare, you're doing all these different things, you're cooking, you're cleaning, you're, you're oh, now you're going, oh, now, now you see my turn. Now you see my turn. See, I see. Oh, no, no, you're still selling me, but it, I, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> no, and that's where you start really doing the numbers. And it really comes down to one, how much can you afford? Two, do I still want to get to that number? If I still want to get to that number, then I'll supplement it with a term policy and wrap it around it. I'll have a permanent policy, but I'm going to wrap it with a big wrapper of term, just uh, the unexpected. So term policy is in case you die. Permanent policy is when you die. Right. You, you I, I didn't know I needed, but I'm glad I had it. Right. And the permanent policy is uh, you will be leaving here. You will be going to the kingdom. Right. And um, we don't want you to be going with a whole lot of debt. And people got to do all these GoFundMe's and all that other stuff. Right. When in actuality, you can have a policy for twenty five dollars. Does that make sense? People can have a policy for fifteen and twenty five dollars. For $100,000, yet they don't get it because they're like, oh, I'm afraid I'm going to die if I get it, right? And I have to be honest with you. I'll raise my hand. Before I got into insurance, I kind of thought that way, right? And I was young, right? And I was like, I don't want nobody to be living off my wife and whatever. You know, my wife get this fat policy. She take care of some other man or whatever. Immature, idiotic thinking, right? Very young in my faith, all that other stuff, right? And what I fail to realize is, my wife is going to be distraught, right? Just as I would, if something were to happen to her and if something were to happen to me, her life would be turned upside down. My life would be turned upside down. I can't even work. I may need to take three months off just to get, wrap my head around the fact that I will be on my own trying to put this together. I might need 100,000, a half a million, a million dollars in the bank, just so I don't have that to worry about. Less known all the other stuff I have to worry about. Does that make sense? I'd rather, even if it's a term policy, I don't care if it's a term policy. They cut me a term policy for a million dollars. I I, I can I, I got a million reasons why I can just sit and say, okay, let me call the word, tell them, hey, listen, I'm gonna take time off. I gotta just, I don't even know if I wanna come back to work. Let me just gather myself. Let me just get it right. You know what I'm saying? Now. That I convince you now, Miss Richards? No. Not oh. Yet. oh my Only because I'm, I'm thinking about what is the term. You didn't say what the term is in this advanced combination scenario. So 
Well, I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't matter what the term is. I can buy a 30 year term, right? If I have a 30 year term and I buy it at 30, it's going to at least take me to 60, right? If something well, happened to me. Yeah, but you, I mean, we were talking earlier about 10 year terms. So 10 year in, in this scenario, I'm not, I'm not buying it yet. No, 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 no. 10 year in this scenario. No, it, it yes and no. You always try to find a combination at worst because a tenure can still work, meaning that, hey, my wife and I, we all we both decided, hey, we're going to retire in 10 years, right? And so the house should be paid for. But what if we make this decision and then I go get on the freeway tomorrow and something happened? In that 10-year window, it still is going to allow her the opportunity to pay the house off with that money, you know what I'm saying? So sure. yes, you, you use, clear. so you use that's the term, clear. right. So you use the term, you, you figure out what you need when you need it for a window of time that you, for the unexpected risk, right? Cause you're transferring risk. That's why we have, oh, that's why we always get insurance yep. on anything. If our house burns down to the ground yep. now, our, the, if the chances, I don't even have the kind of time to deal with you but we pay over on our insurance. Your insurance, you pay more on your premium as though they had to rebuild your house from the slab. Your house very rarely burns to the slab, but you pay insurance enough to cost it just in case it burns to the slab. If you have a fire today in the city, right, you're gonna burn a kitchen or you're gonna burn a garage, right? You, you, you have to replace a kitchen or you'd have to replace a garage, right? The, but the insurance you pay is for the cost to rebuild their entire from the slab. From the foundation, right. Right, and that's how insurance works. So you're always going to pay over, right? And then when you're in those flood zones and all of those, so that's why you pay insurance to cover those things and stuff such as that. So again, so you would, there is a place for term. And the reason why is because uh, most policies sold are term policies. You might just need something so you can figure it out, right? And I think because I've now educated you more on PERM is the reason why now you're so up against you're so up against term when in actuality term is a it's a sweetener it's a complimentary uh piece that you add to your policy because you're trying to get to a uh, you're trying to get to a face value amount and you try to get there by any means necessary and also what you'll find out is once you start running the illustrations and the cost it costs for insurance you're gonna you may find in some instances that you may only be able to afford term and maybe a little bit of perm just to be able to put you in the ground because once you find it out, see, it's good to know this when you're a lot younger. You may not, you may not even buy term. You may only buy fifty thousand dollar policy or term, and you may buy a quarter of a million of perm. Right. Because you're younger, but when you get older, the term insurance costs more, right? So it doesn't make as much sense. It costs more because it's a chance that they may have to pay off in that net term. Exactly. When you're younger, they know they're not going to have to pay off in that term. Unless you just live a, a crazy lifestyle, you're a stunt man, right? Or something like that. That's when they'll have to pay off. And that's why it's so inexpensive because they may not have to pay off. But you start buying it around your 40s and 50s, term insurance is expensive. Mm. But if term insurance is, is, is expensive, then permanent insurance, permanent insurance is really expensive. Exactly. So the game changes. So now, because I'm at a certain age that now the face value is more important to me to ensure that my family can continue on and the legacy and or my trust is properly funded. It makes more sense to me to try to get to a face value than it does to be concerned with that, if that makes sense to you. So enough about that, right? So okay. it has its place, um, especially when you start, when they start, they, they pull that tin key out and you start adding it up. Wow, what does it make sense? Okay, I'm trying to get to 650,000 on this screen. That's where I'm trying to get to. Because in order to pay all of my bills off, all of my debt, retire all my debt, pay off my house and everything, I need to get to $650,000 worth of insurance. This is the way I selected to get to it. So I'm just giving you an example. Now, I threw this in here because you guys have been so patient and you guys hung out with me this long over the last uh, six weeks. I want to show you and or tell you some things you need to be careful of. When people approach and it says, hey, it's a VUL, right? I know somebody on here has at least heard that term before, a VUL. It's a VUL policy. It's a variable universal life policy, right? It is, there's that universal word again, right? It's flexible, universal. I can bend it forward, I can bend it backwards. But it's a variable universal life. It is an advanced policy that only should be reserved for 
uh, advanced planning, right? And it, it has mutual funds and it has investments on the back end of it. So you have to be very sophisticated. And my, my argument about VULs has always been you don't mix your investments with your insurance because there's already a cost of insurance that's more than what you what you want on that. And again, we already said there's no guarantees in investments, right? But there's a cost of insurance that continues to go up. So if I have one bad year, a couple of bad years in my VUL, my policy could never recover. So enough, I, I don't really want to get into that anymore, but I took you from a smart car to an Audi, I mean, to a, to a Honda Accord, to a Mercedes S-Class. Now I'm taking to a Lamborghini Hurricane Spider, right? It, that's, how, that's how exotic it can get, but it gets expensive too, right? It's only really reserved for the ultra wealthy. They know how to use it to their advantage. They can pump it up and then they can go in the back and pull out tax-free dollars on the back end, but they know what they're doing on the front end to the funds and all that other stuff. Hopefully that makes sense to you. It does. All right. So that's the VUL, right? I threw that in there because you may hear those terms because, oh, yeah, it's a VUL policy. You're like, ah, I think I'm good on that, right? Um, you can do it. You just got to gotta know what you're doing with them, right? Because you can end up blowing them up and they don't pay out nothing, right? Or you can have them where, hey, I thought I had a half a million dollar policy. You're like, yeah, but your policy took a hit over this 10-year cycle. And now it's only a quarter of a million. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. But I thought it was half a million. Yeah, but we had to take money out the back end to cover the cost of insurance. So it's no longer half a million face value. Now it's only a quarter of a million face value. Now it's only 250,000. Those are the, that's what that's can happen here. Or you can buy it for half a million and it goes to a million. Those are the, that's what you, but again, high risk, high reward. We already talked about that. All right, so how are we looking here? All right, so we got about 10. So again, it's, 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 it's very creative. Mutual funds on the back end. It rides the highs of the market and it rides the lows of the market, right? And that's what it does. It's, it's kind of flexible like that. All right, so um, I'm going to throw this in here just because you may run into these and I'll, I'll throw them out and help you out a little bit and um, just kind of bring some familiarity to them. Um, some of the things that they talk about when you get an insurance policy, you can get riders on them, right? And a rider is a, a rider is a sweetener, right? It's something to enhance the policy, additional costs, of course, but it does enhance it. So riders, are, there are extra benefits to the policy holder. They can buy as an add-on to life insurance. One of them is guaranteed insurability, right? No matter what may happen to me, if I buy the guaranteed insurability rider, I will always, as long as I have this rider, I'm always guaranteed insurability. Even if I want to increase the face value of this permanent policy, I don't have to take a physical anymore because I've already bought that in advance. I could, and, and, and I had, because I was in insurance, I had guaranteed insurability on one of my policies and I ended up having cancer uh, several years ago. And, but I went back to the well to buy more insurance. I didn't have to take a physical. Right? It didn't strike against my insurance policy because I bought this rider in advance. Now, I would be lying to you if I told you I knew really actually what I was buying when I bought it. Right, I, I just knew if I ever needed it that I wouldn't have to do it now. If I would have went back and I had, you know, now that I, that I have, I only have one kidney, my rate would have been sky high. Why my rate would have been sky high? Because now I'm at risk. But it wasn't. It's the, I got my insurance when I was young. I have a preferred rating. I'm going to always get the best rating. And I bought and I locked in my insurability, guaranteed insurability, right? Waiver of premium. If I ever become permanently disabled, disabled right? I can no longer work, right? 100% disabled. Something happened. I'm in a car accident. I can no longer work. I have something that kicks in and says waiver of premium. Once you turn in your disability paperwork or whatever, you don't have to pay the premium anymore. We'll, we'll pay it for you. Boom. That's a rider. Those are sweeteners. You can add them on there, right? And then the other one is a family income benefit. What does the family income benefit do? Gosh, I can't remember that one. Family income benefit. 
I apologize. I can't remember what that writer did. There's, there's probably about 30 or 40 writers. I can't remember what that one's for. It'll probably come back to me. But that's a that's a very good writer. I think the family income benefit is. I can't remember it. I'm not I'm, I can't right now. It escapes me. So I apologize for that. I put it in there, but now I can't remember it. So I'm sorry, but this gives you an idea of the, some of the writers that you can add on um, to your, your yes, policy. Yes, it's still all good, thanks. No, yeah, but I'm, I'm letting you know, there's about 30 different writers and you have to ask about writers or you have to ask about, do you have something that would happen if this happened to me, right? If that happened, they'll say, oh, well, we have a writer for that. How much is that writer? So those additional five bucks a month. You're like, boom, I'll take that, right? So. Let me give you this advanced case study as we kind of close it up a little bit. And um, born December 14, 2001, was in the hospital three months. This young boy uh, was in intensive care and he had nine operations, right? Um, here's another young boy. He was born January 27, uh, 2000. He was in ICU. He was two pounds at birth. He was in the hospital for two months. He's had six operations. Both of these boys, these are my sons, right? One is Joshua, one is Jordan. Uh, never took a physical. They were too young to take physicals. I bought for them guaranteed insurability rider. They're guaranteed insurability for the rest of their lives, right? They can increase their insurance up to $50,000. Every two, three years, they'll get a call and say, hey, do you want to increase your insurance? Do you want to increase your insurance? Not only that, they never had to take a physical. And I bought for them a spouse rider, meaning that whenever they get married, they can add their wife on without even taking a physical, right? How did I learn this? How, I used to sell insurance. And this is what they told me. They said, you get the insurance on your children while they're young. Pay $10, 25K, $10 a month. What type of insurance do I have? Whole life insurance. I bought both of my boys. I got. I bought them the best gift that Nikes could ever buy them, that PlayStation 5 could ever buy them. Of course, they'd argue, right? No, I need a PlayStation 5. No, you need this permanent life insurance that you will have guaranteed insurability for the rest of your life. Yep, yep. You see that? So though I, I use both of them as samples because I just happened to be in the business at that time. And they were telling me, you need to get this, you need to get that on your kids. I just told you how many surgeries they had. I just told you how many operations they had, but yet they're guaranteed to have guaranteed insurability. They don't even know it. They got so much stuff coming to, they don't even know it. And my point is, that's when it's as cheap. It was $10, $10 for 25K. You can't bury nobody for $10 uh, for 25K a month now. And we got that just in case if our kids started you know, became teenagers, start going crazy and wild and all that. It doesn't matter. We would have got, we would have been able to have enough to bury them or what have you. Uh, you know, you start having a wayward children or what have you. We got this. We didn't know how they turn out. Good. You know, we thank the Lord that they turn out. Both of them are in college. They're doing well. But now they even have the spouse rider. Their spouse doesn't even know she's going to be blessed as a result of that. So, but they have whole life. It wouldn't have been, wouldn't, wouldn't go make sense to get term, Right. We're going to get universal. We want something that's going to last our whole life, right? And um, I think it's, it may be to the point where I think it's already paid up. Got to take a look at it. So let me give you this last. This is a lot of meat. This is a big meat sandwich right here, but I wanted to show you this, and I wanted to end with this, right? This is an illustration, right? This is the most technical piece that you will see tonight, but it's the most important piece, and it requires a lot of thought. It goes into it. This so information that you're looking at right here. So what I wanted to show you was um, this is a policy for a 74-year-old, right? $1,021 a month, right? Now, what I want to show you is the death benefit is $250,000 because it says it right here. This is the death benefit right here. Right. And they say, hey, listen, we'll guarantee 3% guaranteed interest rate. Right. They're guaranteed the interest rate. It only takes them, excuse me, it only takes them to, it's only guaranteed to take them to 83. 
So really they only have it for about 10 years. And this is a permanent policy. They only have it for about 10 years. And I'm only showing you this so you, so you can see how a policy is, is read when they give you illustration. You always start from the left to the right. What age is the person at? How many years have they had the policy? This is how much premium they're paying out per year. This is the, oh, this is the cumulative premium right here, right? Um, as you move to the left, there's a policy value, surrender value, and then there's a death benefit. Over here, they say, hey, we're gonna give you the non-guaranteed rate assumptions that what we can tell you right now, this policy is doing 3.3%. Well, if the policy is at least doing 3.3%, then there is a cash value that you may have if it's because it's over the three percent you may have that right and you won't have you won't be able to get any of it out in the first two years but in the third year you can get a little bit of it out but the cash value of it is seventeen thousand five hundred above the 250. so what i'm trying to show you here is i'm giving you an example of what an actual enforce illustration looks like. Every policy should have an enforce illustration. What would my contract, this is part of your contract. What, would, what does my contract look like at what age? And is it guaranteed? Is it not guaranteed? All right, so this is a lot. This is, I, I was debating of should I throw this in there or not, but I wanted to put that in there so you guys can kind of see that. Well, what was that, uh, Jenny, enforce what? This is an enforce illustration. Oh, okay. So it's called an enforce policy and illustration. Every single insurance policy should have one by law. Every single insurance policy should have one by law, regardless if it's term, universal, or whole life. And you read them from left to right, and you're going to always have these two columns. You're going to have a, a guaranteed assumption. Is, Listen, we can guarantee this. They say, we guarantee this, we can guarantee this 3%. They say, but this is an assumption if the policy did better, then you'd have, you'd stand to have some cash value in there. So in this instance, they say, listen, we can guarantee the policy at least to 83, right? But if the policy did 3.3, and they'll say, if it did 3.3, which we think it's doing and it can do, then you'll have this policy until age 100. I don't know if that if you can see that, if that makes sense to you. The death benefit would be 250. Do you see that? So really, this policy is only guaranteed to 83. Hey, listen, we can guarantee it to 83 based on a guarantee. They say, but if we assume that it's going to do 3.3, then it'll at least take you out to 100. Does that make sense? Yep. It's hard to see. It's hard to follow. But I just wanted you to see how these numbers work. Concentrate. When you look at this, you're going to look at the two blocks. You're going to look at the guaranteed assumptions, and you're going to look at the non-guaranteed assumptions. Every single policy should have both. Guaranteed, non-guaranteed <laughs> assumptions. All right. So <laughs> who is that? Questions, Wesley. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, so on the guaranteed 3.3 percent. Yes. What happens? I, I, maybe I'm not understanding this right. But what happens if you have a year, or is this based on a year that it doesn't do 3.3 percent? No. So the, they're they're just giving you an illustration of what could actually happen. Like if, this is the average, right? So it's not it's not like oh. Well, you have it because some years is going to do better, right? But mm -hmm. what they're telling you is right now, it, uh, if we looked at a worst case scenario, it'll be 3.3, but we can guarantee at least three. Oh, okay. So a lot of times when they give you, that's why, that's why when you get and you tell them, hey, give me a quote, they're telling you what the mortality table is telling them. They're telling you what the interest rates are telling you. That, that's why. So they're updated. We see our updates, I think, once a week on our quotes would change once a week. I can quote you something today and then next week it'll be a little bit different because I don't know what the interest rates are going to do. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so whatever they give you and whatever you sign 
it's going to be attached inside your policy. They're going to say, listen, at that time, when I signed my contract at that date, that's what I had. You can, you can go to court on that. That's why they must have them by law. I know in California, I don't know anywhere else. I know in California, I'm almost want to say all anywhere you go for a life insurance policy, you must have an enforce illustration. And I know in California, it's, it's the law. You must have an enforce illustration to accompany um, your contract or your insurance contract. Okay, good question. I'm gonna give you this one. Well, a lot of people may say, well, I have, I'm a husband. And so I have a spouse rider, right? I think, was that the family rider? Was that the one I was talking about? Spouse rider? No, I wanna, family income benefit. No, I, man, that's gotta come to me. That's killing me right now. So a spouse rider is a husband has a policy. And so, oh, you can add your wife on and your kids on as part of your riders. It would be a lot less expensive. You'd be like, oh, okay, well, I can add them all. Yeah, you can add your wife for twenty dollars a month, and you can add your 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 children for five dollars a piece a month. You'd be like, oh man, let's do that, right? You add them on a spot as riders, right, to insure them, get get them a little bit of insurance, right? Probably about ten thousand a piece, right, or something of that nature. Let's let's say they say, hey, you can add your wife on. You got a hundred thousand for yourself, but you can add your wife on. She can ride underneath your policy for ten dollars, and we'll give her a ten thousand dollar policy. And you can add your son on, and he we'll give him a ten thousand dollar policy, and we'll charge him five dollars, right? So you paid an additional fifteen dollars to pick up insurance for them, right? So you with me, Miss Richardson? Got it. She like, yeah, I got it. Okay. She like, where's he? Where's he going with this? right? Because a lot of people say, well, oh, I don't have that much money so I can save money. You can, but what happens when the husband passes away 10 years later? The wife has to go out and get insurance. She's 10 years older. The child has to go out and get insurance. They're 10 years older, right? Mm -hmm. We already talked about insurance is based on age and health. They're already going to pay more when they could have got it 10 years, 10 years prior, and they could have had their own individual policies. So these are some of the, the, the faults and the fallacies that people run into when I say, oh, I can save money. No, they need to have their own policy. Everybody need to have their own policy. Hopefully that was helpful, right? I think that's it. I think that was the last slide I put in there. That was the last slide. It has been a pleasure to work with you guys, work with your church. It's always a pleasure to work with Pastor Sylvester. Uh, he's very inquisitive. He always challenges me. That's why I love talking to him. Um, and I've been knowing him for some time now. And I think he'll probably be reaching out to one or two of you guys to, to possibly see about um, giving me some type of video testimonial of what you thought the class was about and how it impacted or and or it changed your life and some of the things you learned or maybe it didn't maybe you still stuck on the term policies and it didn't it didn't have any effect <laughs> this has been tremendous <laughs> jenny jenny you are funny <laughs> <laughs> maybe the whole totality of the class and affect you outside of the term policy no i'm just kidding no, no. <laughs> I, I was I was thinking of coming on with my wife's voice. Oh no, no, no! You would have really messed me up then. Um, no, it's been a pleasure. Um, you guys, um, for what you wanted, and I and I applaud you, Pastor, um, because uh, this is very intense to some of the normal classes that I do. Normal, some of the normal classes I do, I'll do one or two sessions on something. You said, "Hey, we want to kind of give them." a full, and this was a, this was a full hero sandwich. This is a meatloaf sandwich. This is a lot, right? And uh, we did it over a six week period. So I applaud you for, for being very, very um, um, generous in trying to provide this for your church. Um, most churches don't, that's what I'm saying. I'll do, I may do a session or two, but you said, hey, I want the full thing. So I appreciate that. So thank you. And you challenged me too. It's like, hey, you normally do this, but can you do this, 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 this? And they're like, whoa, all right, put them all together. 
So yeah, so I appreciate that. So thank you so much. No, thank you, Jenny. First, I want to thank you um, for giving of your time, giving of your knowledge, your wisdom, and allowing God to use you. I want to pause and thank my wife for stepping in uh, tonight, um, as I could not be in two places at one time. Uh, right. When she actually prayed uh, for those not feeling well, she was also including herself, who mm. had to miss our daughter's symphony because she wasn't well, but she was still a trooper and came on to the to the um, to the site so that everything could go smoothly and be on time. So I want to thank my wife. I want to thank all of the members, all of those who have come on um, for your dedication. For those who have come on Facebook, uh, followed via Facebook. I want to share two things. I'm I'm not Jenny Jones. I'm not a financial consultant. I'm not a financial person. I am a pastor. Um, I do have my members. I do have the people of God on my heart. I look after them and I have to look at the times in which we are living in. And, and so while Jenny uh, graciously gave praise to me, I'm simply trying to do what the word of God says. And I'm trying to do, I'm trying to prepare my people um, because we're living in a time, I just yeah. had a friend, a childhood friend die from COVID, same age as me, um, n with, with, n with no policies. And so po p policies for people these days have become GoFundMe. Right. You know, right. Uh, and so someone passes away and then they start a GoFundMe page uh, to try to just pay for the uh, funeral costs, try to pay for uh, much less the needs of the family. And I'm truly trying to keep my people out of that type of situation. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes you can't help it, but, um, you know, and people are living longer. You have yes. seven, you have 70 year olds taking care of 90 year olds. Mm -hmm. And it, it becomes difficult when there's nothing in place. And the Bible declares, uh, I, I don't know finances, but I do know the Bible. And 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 everything that Jenny said tonight, um, if you if you've seen um what's the movie with Tom Cruise and Cooper Gooden Jr. Um, uh, I don't know. Show me the money. Show me the money. Is that what it is? I don't know. Oh, Jerry Maguire. Jerry, Jerry Maguire. Maguire. Yeah, 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 yeah. The name of the movie is Jerry Maguire, but yeah, but you you remember Show Me the Money. Yeah. No, but but he and his he and his new wife were going through problems and he started kind of trying to get away from things and avoid things and he wasn't coming home and the marriage was on the rocks and he realized that he needed her more in his life and he came back and she was in a woman's group and he started uh, he started talking to her and she told him, shut up, shut up, just shut up. You had me at hello. That's what she said. You had me at hello. Well, tonight Jenny had me at when he was talking about leaving something for those left behind. That's when he that's when he had me. If if you don't know anything else, know that the Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance to his children's children. That 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 that's what a good man does. So when we when Jenny's talking about life insurance, we're talking about inheritance. When you read the Bible of Deuteronomy and Joshua, you're talking about an inheritance. Hey, hey, there it is. There it that's is. What we started off with that, but you said oh, you were see? running a little bit late, but we, that's what we started exactly. off with. Good for you, Pastor. <laughs> yeah. I, I, yes. I, I, see, I, I didn't even know. It wasn't even here. That's how we started. I, I, that's how God works. So we well, got it. Okay. And I started that's, with that, Pastor. That's what I started exactly. with. Praise the, praise the Lord. That's reaffirmation. That's yes. affirmation. Yes. And, um, and then, um, and, 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 and so I, you know, in the black community, and I have to say this, in the black community, we have an aversion of talking about things that pertain to possibly death. Mm -hmm. we, we, you, you know, if we're talking about life insurance, now I don't want to talk about it because it's going to make it happen. Right. That's 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 what that's what many of our people believe, and mm -hmm. and and uh, many times we we are left our people our people are left. Um, 
with the government having to come in and take over because there's no will, there's no insurance, uh, there's no saying where the house goes, there's no saying where the, the, the things go. And so I want my people to be the head and not the tail. I want us to be able to coalesce our resources. I want us to think. Uh, Jesus said, count the cost. If you're going to build something, count the cost right. that he, Jesus dealt with money. And so I just want my members, those of you who are on, I see your names on, those of you who are on Facebook, um, that we, there's a term in the Bible, we get our houses in order. And this is a part of getting our house. So if you didn't think this was a Bible study, if you thought this was just finances and you were like, pastors having somebody come here and it's not even a Bible study, this is probably more Bible than, 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 than you realize. This is, this is a, a more spiritual than you realize. Yep. I told you, I told you on last Sabbath, that if your money is not right, your worship is not right. Yeah. All right. If your money is not right, you are not in a right mindset. You are not in a in a proper mindset to dedicate your being to God because you either trust in God to to sustain you or you trust in money to sustain you. And money can't sustain you. It is God who sustains you, but it is also God who gives you the power to gain wealth, to have money. And so I just want to thank Jenny. I want my congregation, I want my members to know the foundation of why we did this. I want you to know the why when Jenny gives you the how and Jenny gives you the means to know how to navigate. And so um, we're, we're, we're getting ready to face some serious times. Oh, Infla sure. Inflation is sky high right now. The gas prices are going higher. Uh, members have to debate whether they can even drive to church now. Uh, and, and so that's real. That's real when you look at your bottom line that it impacts your daily living. And so we want our people to be confident. We want our young adults uh, that are not on here to know that God has a plan for their lives. And we may not be the right messengers to give it to them, but they need to know that it is available to them. And so without any further ado, uh, we're going to bring this to an end. Jenny, thank you very much once again. Thank your wife. Uh, for loaning you to us. And I'm sure we'll do some partnerships and some things in the future. I will, um, I will case the members that have been on that have gone through the six weeks, because one of the things I'm going to do after is that I want to, I want to bless and I want to benefit the members. And that's the good thing about um, recording the service, I get to see who's been on each week. And we want to bless you that have been on each week, not just with um, the knowledge and the wisdom that you gain, but the, but Tamron, I'm going to seek to do something for you that we can bless you with for your dedication. So without further ado, we want to thank you uh, for those who are listening via Facebook. If you are not a member of the Big T, the Tamron Avenue Seventh-day Adventist Church, you can contact us at 323-774-0181. You can visit us at 417 South Tamron Avenue, Compton, California, 90220. We worship on Saturdays in person. And you can catch us on Facebook Live, but we are, we are worshiping in person. And once a month, uh, beginning in December, we also re resume our Ask the Pastor in the afternoon. And that will be on Zoom and Facebook Live as well. So until the next time, until next week, uh, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May, may the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forevermore. Yes, Sister uh, Richardson. We will give uh, Jenny Jones's contact information to everyone. We will make that available to everyone. 
especially that has been that have been on uh, the, these meetings. Uh, we will also uh, select a few of you to make a video so that you can give testimony to what this um, what this uh, service did. And Jenny will compile that, and he'll be able to utilize that for his services. And uh, we'll continue this partnership as God sees fit in the future. Thank you so much. May God richly bless each and every one of you. Good night. Thank you all. Thank you all. Bye. Bye-bye. Good night, Jenny. Good God night. Bless you. All right. Good night. Good night. Good night. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Bye-bye. Good night. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.